Okay, I quickly played around with the terrain and found from our previous video that it kind of starts to look a little bit more realistic and it allows me to sculpt the way I want my terrain to look. It allows me to build from the ground up and to make it look a bit more realistic. You can see that there's still parts I'm not quite happy with um, and you'll be wondering why there's all these flat areas around my terrain. That's because I'm going to be putting water into mine to make it look like a big island that people are on. The other thing you'll notice is I haven't actually gone through and painted my terrain yet uh, in contrast to the other example that I did. So just bring that one back up and to turn the other one off. I haven't gone through and given it any terrain paint. And the reason for that is as soon as you start re-stretching some of the terrain, it can get some weird, weird effects going through it. Uh, that doesn't really show it too badly, um, but it, there are some weird anomalies you can get. So the best thing to do is to leave your terrain unpainted, untextured, until you're really happy with the shape, and then so you only have to make minor adjustments. So for instance, I want my player to be able to walk through this section and kind of walk up on a slide slant. So I'm just gonna make a slight change to that. To do this, let's actually use that tool. Got a bit of a, a cut there. Bit of a cut there. Bit of a cut there. And to make this a little bit easier for the player to use later, it's always good to do something like this. Okay, once you've got something like that, you can then come along with a smoothing brush. And smooth out the path that you want them to take. Now, if I was to do that with all the textures, I'll then have to repaint the entire wall and everything that I touched, where it's just easy to do it that way for now. So once you've got your basic shape and your basic outline of where everything's going to go, that's when you start texturing. However, there's one more way that I can actually go through and texture an object, uh, texture a terrain. So to do that, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to relabel this one and call it terrain raw. The reason why I'm going to call it terrain raw is it was done by a terraw map. I'm going to go back to this one that I've got turned off at the moment and call that one, which is the one that you can sort of see overlaid there. I'm going to call this one terrain manual and that's just because I have to manually do everything and I'm going to turn them both off so I've started with nothing again. They're still in my hierarchy view, they're just invisible at the moment, not activated. And I'm going to create a new terrain, so a third terrain. Now this isn't usually a good habit to do for any game but by creating three terrains it's actually going to show me and show you guys more importantly how to use your different terrain tools. The next terrain tool I'm going to use isn't actually part of the terrain assets folder. It's actually a different package that was created in the 2009 section, now that I've corrected myself, uh, 2009 in a very short period of time and it's been released. It is actually hard to find, so you do need to check the forums to find this one out. I'm not going to provide you a download link, unfortunately, because I haven't been able to find any uh, legal licenses to see if I can or cannot do that, so it's better to play safe. Um, so import package, custom package. For the school students though, you are more than welcome to ask me and I will provide it for you. Um, it's actually going to be just saved in a Unity package, terrain toolkit. Again, if you do need to, just quickly Google terrain toolkit, um, but the download links seem to change very quickly. So terrain toolkit, go open. And then again, that will actually import very quickly. And the reason for it, compared to some of the other things we've imported, is it's just a couple of pictures and some scripts. There's nothing too much to it. So import. And what you'll notice is once that's actually fully imported, you'll get this terrain toolkit come through. 
Now there's a couple of bit, different bits and pieces that you've got to be aware of. The very first thing is, is it does have a readme file and it does tell you that it was done by Snore Mold by Unity Summer of Code 2009 and it goes through and tells you all those different bits and it looks like there's even some uh, documentation but I do know that six times nothing dot com site is not currently active where the train took it is and that's where the problem lies so to go through um, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this terrain toolkit and what you'll actually see is there's a little bit of weird stuff going on here but let's select our terrain and drag and drop our script on top and what you'll see is that looks a lot different compared to what you're normally used to when you drag and drop a script it's got a lot more buttons and it's actually part of they've done that to the editor for you to make it easy. So to do this, this is actually where it gets interesting. We can actually create a texture or create a terrain, sorry. And we could use a Voronoi and let's just leave it on its default. Generate. Now this can take some a while depending on how many passes and blends you do. And instantly you get this weird terrain all gone through. And you could argue, okay, that could be some weird areas around the world. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm actually going to create a fractal terrain. Again, I'm just going to use the default one. And that's actually going to completely change and wipe over the terrain that was there before. Now, you can actually see that it kind of looks re a little bit more realistic. But let's increase the delta. Or even the preset. Let's go rough mountains. Generate terrain. And you can see that that's there. We could even go Perlin and go Hellish Landscape and generate Perlin. You can play around with all these settings. I'm not going to go through each and every single one for you. And you can see that there is some uh, Hellish Landscape. It really does look pretty hellish. So I'm going to use this one and actually show you some of the other tools. You can actually go through and smooth the terrain and that does the entire terrain just like what the smooth butt tool does but a little bit different the other one that you can get is you can get this erode one going through and if you erode it it acts as if it's been eroded away like normal different things so if we go wind and apply wind erosion you can even pick the direction that it erodes from and it will actually slowly go through those iterations and start to apply some realistic um, environmental changes to your terrain. So that one's almost complete. And you'll see that it changes very slightly, but it starts to look a little bit more realistic. And that's what we're after. So you can actually see from what we started with, that's actually started to become actually pretty decent. Again, it's not what I'm going to use, but it just does show you what tools you can use. So I'm actually going to modify this just a little bit just to show you what we can do. So I'm going to use my normal tool and a large brush. And you can see I can still edit this just like I was before. Increase the brush size. I'm just going to set a default, just a flat plane in there just to give you a little bit of difference going through. Okay, that's not too bad. So you'll see this big terrain. It doesn't look realistic, but it's it's good enough for what we want. Because the next one, after you've gone through and eroded away your terrain, to actually give it that realistic look as if it's not just a, a random mountain, is through the textures. Now you will notice that in the, the version of Unity that you're using, there are quite a few different bugs that are available, <laughs> that are out. Um, this was created quite a while ago. Um, you won't, sometimes you see errors in your console window. Um, it may work, it may not, it depends on the version you're using. Currently I've lucked out. Um, to tell you the exact version I'm using right now is 4.3.3 F1. Um, so to go from there is we actually need to add a texture. So we click the add texture button and you'll see that this ch default checkerboard pattern occurs. That's just one that they've added for us. I'm actually going to change that over. Again, I've still got those terrains uh, textures that I used before. So the very first one I'm going to use is let's start with snow. 
okay, not too bad. Um, but again, that's not quite my cliff texture. So let's try again. It's actually asking for a cliff texture. So let's just click cliff. There we go. If I then go through and add another texture, it's going to say texture one and asking me for that. So I'm going to pick, let's go with grass. And let's add one more. And maybe pick some uh, rocky dirt. Once you've got those there, you can actually then go through and apply a procedural texture. And what that will do is you can actually see that there's a couple of things that have occurred. The very first one is let's try and pick where our textures have gone. So to start you off with, our cliffs texture has applied to our cliff that you can see here. Our texture one has applied the grass. And our texture two has applied along the top. So it does take a little bit of guessing. There is a pattern to it. But as soon as you just change text like that, it starts to look a little bit more realistic. Now, problem is, is the grass that I selected was for a lawn. So let's pick a hill. Looks a little bit more realistic. Let's go one more again. Grass and rock. There we go. So you can actually see that. Now, what do all these different bits and pieces mean? So the very first one is texture slope. That actually tells you where the slope will be occurring. So you can actually see you can play around with some of these values. And if you change where that slope is, it does change what's occurring to the mountain. Uh, the default's usually the best one to go with. From here, you can also then play with your texture heights. So what height does the texture start and finish? So if I go through on here, you'll actually notice, if I click the button, that it allows the snow, which is texture two, to have more. So I bring it all the way up, it, allow, it reduces it. And if you play with these values enough, and that's really the only easy way to learn how it works, is where you actually draw different bits and pieces. So really start to get in the hang of how this works and what you want. Now this does give you a very realistic feel to your game. Um, if you were to go and make a very large game, this would pretty much be one of the main ways you would want to generate your terrain map, especially in a small team. Um, however, out of the different terrain ones, I'm just gonna relabel this one to terrain toolkit gen or toolkit. I now have three different terrains that I can pick from. I've got my terrain toolkit one, which looks like that. The benefits of this one is it looks realistic, but when you go and actually add something of yourself, it doesn't look that great. So it does need a little bit more work. So I'm not going to use that one. The next one is the terrain manual. I'm just going to zoom in on that one for you so you can see exactly what it was. Um, it was our first one. Now, if I had spent as much time as I did, it would take a lot longer to reach something that looked realistic and to be usable than what it did for that uh, terrain toolkit. And that's what the benefit of the toolkit is. The benefit of this one, at least it all looks the same um, in terms of you made everything. So it kind of has that same pattern all the way throughout and doesn't have a mix. Again, I'm not gonna use terrain manual. The one I am gonna use though is the terrain raw. And the reason for this is a bit of both. Now this one is not the best terrain I've ever done, but for learning purposes, it's gonna be the best. Um, it's going to have exactly how I want my my game to be planned out and working. I will make changes along the way and it won't look too bad at all. Ultimately, I would like to use the terrain toolkit one, um, but it's going to be a little bit more confusing when I'm using that one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with just the raw map because it's the best of both worlds um, in that regard. Um, now, what your challenge is, is to go through and to place every single tree and ground object and everything else that you want your environment to look like. So don't put any buildings or anything else in. Um, you can put a couple of things in and these are the tricks that you'll need. The two assets uh, import package is a first person controller or character controller that will import for you. 
and you'll notice that you'll also get a new folder called standard assets with character controls in it. And the other as package that you'll need is water. Now I'm going to use the pro only version. The basic water will work just as well. It's purely just the way it looks. And as soon as that's imported, there are two things that you can do. The very first one is when you're making your train, it needs to be an island base. So select your water. Let's just chuck daylight on. And you'll see that that's not much water. So to scale it, you can press R or click the button up here that changes your scale. And let's just go through and enlarge that one. So you can see that there's a big water pool along there. And the second thing you need is your character controller. Let's just whack a first person controller on, which means when you hit play, you can, as long as you don't fall through the ground, if you do fall through the ground, just lift him up. You can actually start to see your terrain. Now, if you can't see it too well, just throw a directional light, so game object, create other directional light. That will light it up for you, hit play. And therefore you can now see your water and everything. So texture it how you need to, everything along those lines, um, because the next video we'll actually be looking at adding some extra features in and we're not going to be so terrain based. So that will take you a lesson or so to actually get done um, and I shall see you on the other side.